There are too many dead to cope with right now in parts of the Indian capital. And they're piled up in vehicles outside. The coronavirus rules mean this is where most relatives have to say goodbye. It's massively distressing and hugely undignified. They're working all hours inside. They just can't stop. And it's been like this for the last two weeks, all day and all night. The bodies just keep on coming. Whilst we were there, bodies were being brought in every few minutes. There's no room left inside the crematorium, so they've spilled out into the open ground next door. Coronavirus has ripped through this city and they're rushing to keep up with the devastation it's caused. And this ancient Hindu ritual is now both a desperately lonely affair but also crowded out alongside dozens of other hasty funerals. India is still hitting world record coronavirus figures with one COVID death in just under every four minutes in Delhi and its healthcare system is buckling. So those with sick relatives are doing everything they can to keep them alive, queuing up to fill up their own oxygen cylinders. These are like gold dust in this city with a black market value of four times their normal price. So whatever that I ask, I'll pay for it. So I have no clue how much amount he is going to ask. So when my number is going to come, when my chance is going to come, whatever amount he is asking, I'll pay. If this would have happened like last year, then it would have been okay. Nobody knew about it. But they got a year and they wasted it completely on election rallies and all the other stuff. So it's heartbreaking, but uh, we don't have any other options. Some of these people have been lining up for hours, but they are getting access to oxygen. And they're asking if they can get hold of it. How come the government and the hospitals can't? A sports stadium opened only days ago as a COVID facility because of the shortage of beds in the city was turning away patients today. Full India is a problem. Yeah. But you've only got 50 people in there, I understand. Oxygen. It's the same story across much of the capital, with several of the top hospitals still reporting an acute shortage of oxygen, and the Prime Minister calling top-level meetings to try to solve the crisis. Why aren't you admitting any people? Why have you got no oxygen beds available? Not enough oxygen. That didn't stop Hina from begging them to admit her father. He's a rickshaw driver and suffering. He's also the only earner in his family. And they've spent three months' wages buying an oxygen tank from an illegal market so he can breathe. Rich or poor, Indians are doing whatever they can to keep breathing. Allahu Akbar. Every section of society's been hit, with the deaths rising at their fastest rate since the start of the pandemic and cutting across every creed and religion. But there's doubt about almost everything, with warnings that the surge in testing is now leading to a lack of testing material. Irfan is burying his brother, but with a death certificate he doesn't believe. 20 members, my family, no COVID. No positive. And as a COVID victim, that means the precious Muslim rituals are also banned. And their heartache is all the more because of what feels like gross insensitivity and a keen sense that all this could have been avoided. The country, I am feeling very bad. I have money, I have everything, but I can't save my sister. Because no bed, nothing, nothing like that. No gas, no oxygen, no bed. Where we can do, where we can go. All across the city and across the country, coronavirus is leaving its scars on the land and on its people. And India is now the global centre of this pandemic.